Zarina from Zarina's Guides and here I'm going to show you how to make your own template for a Wheel of Fortune or word puzzle or some type of game where people are guessing and you want to reveal the answers in your PowerPoint if they guess correctly. So here you can see this is a board already created but how I made this I'm going to go ahead and just give you a quick demo but before I do let me show you how it works in practice. So let's just go ahead and if I, well actually before I do that, let me control Z and undo. When you want to do your puzzle, you do want to highlight the board pieces to say what they would be. And I'm just going to quickly make them a color and say, okay, I'm going to drag up here one, a two. And by the way, this only works in PowerPoint. It doesn't work properly in Google Slides because Google Slides doesn't have the linking feature that's needed for this puzzle to work, unfortunately. So until they add that in Google Slides, we're stuck with using this t cool technique only in PowerPoint. So from there, I'm going to go to Slideshow, play from start, and you can see right there, those letters at the bottom aren't showing and the answers are also not showing. But if I put in one, two, three, and four, they appear. And that's how it works. So and let me go ahead and show you how to make this board. So I'm going to now go over to insert. I want a new slide. And what you'd be starting off with is about this. I just delete this stuff. And you're going to afterwards insert a shape, which is somewhere around here. Here it is, shapes. And so I use the square and make it about however big you want. So let's just say I like, oh, I like about here. Once you have it the way you want it, you can make, um, well, actually here, we're gonna type in a letter. Actually, no, sorry. <laughs> we're gonna duplicate this box really quickly. So uh, let's see, where can I duplicate? Is it right here? Sorry, I want to go to duplicate right there. It's under that little copy thing. And so with this one, that's going to be the shape for our board pieces. And then I'm going to use this one for our letters. And we can now shrink this box. Actually, before we do, sorry, we want to duplicate this one too. So let's duplicate that box. All right, now this one's going to be the little letters that were up top. And just shrink it down. I like it that size. And move that up there. And then we can duplicate these. And type in, for example, A, B, And a C. And then the, do the same thing right here. Let's. Duplicate those. All right. And then what we need to do. After we've made these. Is these ones up top we're going to, oops, we need to name in our object. So if you look somewhere over here, we can see um, I guess I probably should have learned this better, but we're looking for the object pane. Let me go over here again and see if I can find it. It might be under here. Nope, that's not it. It'll say like, maybe when we want to say selection pane, I think that's it. Okay, yes, selection pane. So we go to a selection pane and you can see right there, it's highlighted rectangle with three, but we want to name that A. And then right here, there's rectangle nine. We want to name that B. And then here's rectangle six, or sorry, C. <laughs> 
and we want to name that C. So now in here, those, these particular buttons that we're going to use, they are named. And the reason we need to name them is so we can link our other pieces to those pieces. So this part right here, we can go to duplicate and put our pieces next to each other. But if you want, you can actually, before we do that, it's nice to get these pieces a little bit of a border to them and a drop shadow. Let's see. What other styles here? Somewhere in here you can do all that stuff. I'm not a big pro with that. I'm more of a Google Slides person. But anyways, if you want, I know there's a place in here to make your format have a little bit of a drop shadow so that it stands out a little bit. But I don't want to spend too much time looking for that. So do that on your own. I'll just show you what to do otherwise. Let's just give this a different color for now. And then I think in shape outline, I'm going to give it a little bit more of a weight, at least that. So that way it at least has, um, it at least has some distinguishing factor from the next one. So now if I duplicate this square, stick it next to this one, and duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. I know there's a hot keys for these, but just for now I'm doing it this way. So duplicating and duplicating. And that's creating the board, basically. That's what you basically do, all right? So let's say those are our, our board keys. Now we have to link this one. So we're going to add some animation, which is going to be for it to fade in. So let's just say appear. And then we're going to click again. And we're going to make it say animation ping. But hey, that's not what I want to do. I want to add a trigger. I'm looking for my triggers. Hang on. Animations. Why isn't my trigger button popping up? I don't know why. There. Trigger on click of A. So now, let's go to slideshow and see if we got this working at all. Okay, the A isn't down there. And if I press A, it appears. So that's basically how you go through setting this up. It's a tedious process, which is why I suggest people just go ahead and head to my Etsy store and download my uh, file for $5 because it's really worth it. <laughs> it's very much worth it. Um, so you can see if you go over here for B, so to get the letters stacked up so you can have multiple ones, I'll show you with B. We're going to take B, let's actually just get rid of C over there. So B, we're going to go ahead and Duplicate, which is for my Mac, is Command D is to duplicate. But I actually want them to be more lined up, so it's easier to select them. So go ahead and once you've duplicated a few times, highlight those, and then you want to arrange a line left. And then arrange by aligning top. Oops. <laughs> Shoot. Okay, well, let's go to selection pane. And see, see, they are all selected still. So animations. Fly in. <laughs> Actually, we want up here. And, oops, dang it. Now they're all undone. Let's undo. Shoot. <laughs> pains of this. Okay, I'm pretty sure that 22, 23, 24, 25, and 26, at least those. We've probably got some other ones in there, but let's see. Just want to have to find all of these now. <laughs> or I can just go back and undo again, but oh, sorry people. If you would think if I did like that, all of them would be highlighted, but it didn't work that way. 
even when I was in selection pain, when I do like this, it's not highlighting all of them. So I'm just going to go ahead and take the ones I believe, oops, 21's not one of them, are B's and say appear. Did that even work? Okay, and then I want to reselect them and it doesn't look like they're selected. This is why it's kind of a pain to make this, but and my computer's going slow again. At any rate, if we can ever get back here, <laughs> my computer doesn't want to work. Okay, if we had our bees, let's just spread them out and select them all. So before you do your animations, make sure you don't, don't group them ahead of time because it's kind of hard to get them to do the trigger when they're not properly uh, showing. So here it is. I've selected them. I went up here. Oh, I don't know what we just did. You know what we're going to do? When times don't work out, you just erase and start over. So we'll take C. We'll duplicate it. I'll change it to a B. And I'll show you what I meant to do. So in this is what I meant to do. I meant to put them side by side like that because once you do the third one, it seems to put them all in a row. Then we can go ahead and highlight them. And then we can give the animation up here. And we also want to trigger on the click of B. So now they are triggered on the click of B. We can go ahead and at this point select them all. And now <laughs> we can go arrange them so that they are all stacked and they should work properly. So let's see if that works. Align, top. Okay, so now all of these are supposed to only show on the click of their, on the B. And the C, let's go ahead and make it show up here, trigger, on click of C. And because we have extra Bs, we can put one right there and slideshow. Play from start. And we can put, okay, we're guessing A. It's not an A. Guess C. Not a C. Is it a B? The B didn't work. See how our B didn't show up? Oh, I know why. We're on the wrong slide. <laughs> Ah, thank goodness. So now let's try again. We guess A. Is it an A? We guess C. It's not a C. Is it a B? Oh, it's a B. <laughs> All right, so that's how it works. So that's how you do it, guys. To make your own slide, it's that tedious. You have to make the buttons. You have to get them all aligned. You have to duplicate these squares. You draw out the board there. You have to go to animations. You have to make sure that you link all of those things. It's quite tedious. So again, I have created the board already for people who are interested. You can go over and not have to worry about making your own um, board. It's even got numbers for math teachers. They can use these puzzle pieces to set up math answers um, for the response. To use an actual will, for people looking like, how would you use a will? I suggest using Will of Names. It's a free will that you can set up with the prizes. And one way I suggest using this in class is to have the will open in a Google Meet so that all the students can see the will spin. And you could open up your own Google Meet on, say, your own laptop or Chromebook. And then on the actual display in the classroom that you have with your projector, that's what you would project the PowerPoint that would show the board. And that way, um, students can see what's left of to guessing and understand you know what they might win with their will on the separate device so that's that's it folks that's my Zarina's guides on creating your own will of fortune game in class and how you would do that with PowerPoint again it doesn't work with Google Slides it only works with PowerPoint 
So until Google Slides comes around and helps us out with that linking feature and having the trigger on option, we're still using PowerPoint. All right, bye. Take care.